the Adventure Channel is back, and welcome to the National World War II Museum, New Orleans, Louisiana. Sorry. Do you buy tickets here? One of the really great things is you actually go through a departing train. See this? And it's kind of like the guys who volunteered for service. 41, 42, and they have all the departing schedules. Look at that. Awesome. What do we have up there, Kirk? Uh, That's right. Y'all come on to the line for me? In the beginning, you can see in here is a background coming from World War I all the way back up through here to when it began with these dates. Burned to death. Men drowned in oil. Two waves of Japanese planes attack American military installations at Pearl Harbor. In just 90 minutes, they sink or damage 21 ships and destroy 347 planes on the United States. The president's speech unites a previously divided nation. The news only gets worse. Here is our response with everybody. These are reproductions of famous newspapers back when newspapers were worth a crap and not fish wrap. And there's the legend. How you doing, big man? Nice to see you. Something that's really, really cool. Look at this, you guys. Roosevelt's famous fireside chats, and they have recreated an American home from 1941. In this great living room, pictures, all of this has been donated, by the way. Wow. These are recreations of Japanese internment camps. There's videos of survivors, people that are still around. This is so cool, talking about some of the training and volunteering once you got into your assigned unit. One of my favorite parts that I'll uh, show you guys in just a minute. This was all the manufacturing done for everything that had to be built to wage war and win this. It was an incredible feat of American genius. Yes, American genius to get all this done and everyone involved. This is a really cool exhibit. Here's the numbers right here. Landing craft, communications, metric tons of crude oil. How many machine guns? I'd love to own that many, by the way. How many rounds of ammunition? How many bombers were built? Look at this, 71,000 naval ships, 27 carriers, miles of field and assault wire. How many tons of aircraft bombs? This is unbelievable, fantastic. 2710 Liberty ships and 86,000 tanks. Wow. And look what we've got right down there, folks. Oh, I do love it, so M1. We're jumping ahead just a little bit, but right next to the manufacturing area is the Manhattan Project area. So, oh, look at that. And how many people brought this up? Look at this. How many workers, employees? 
researchers pursued and where it all happened. To the bomb. Uranium already theoretically proven. This is the D-Day area, the invasion of Normandy. Part of the original museum opened all those years ago. I first visited here in 2002. Still looks the same. Here's the map of Operation Overlord. And here's where everybody landed or was supposed to land. All the names, code names. They are legendary now. These things have passed into legend over time. And there is one right here on display. How about that, folks? Enigma Machine. Also a great dream theater song. Here's a night drop into Normandy. This is footage of one of the paratroopers actually boarding the C-47. He's at least July the 5th. He's at least a sergeant because he's got a time. Sure does. Slung upside down. And he's got his uh, backup weapon in the case. He's carrying a sidearm to somewhere, isn't he? Okay, here is the layout mock-up of the entire armada, every ship, every plane, which hit Normandy. All explanations. Ground attack, no, you mean a P-47. The landing craft. The Higgins boat. Beautiful, beautiful thing here. This is Lieutenant Mullen. He commanded one of the boats on Utah Beach, 439, June 6, 1944. Here is the flag he flew. Look at this. Gorgeous, isn't it? That's a mirror. And here is Omaha Beach, the first of the 29th. This is true, boy, these guys caught hell. And right here, I was just telling you, this is the cover of the D-Day book written by Stephen Ambrose. It's for sale in the um, bookstore. And if you have not seen it or read it, you must get that book. Here are the legends, guys. Look at this. I remember that 50th anniversary when Ronald Reagan spoke at the um, cemetery and those guys that were there visited again. And that's what they hit. This is a recreation of the hedgerows that were very famous in that part of Normandy. A lot, a lot of pictures here. Okay, there's a really amazing story about um, PFC Joseph Barano. He was um, 5th Infantry. And um, he was shot through this helmet. This is actually his helmet, you guys. See where the round went right there, skimmed his webbing, and came out right there. And he had no damage at all. Was the PFC being watched over? So he was there. B-26s were over mm -hmm. Romania? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still had it, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of our science teachers in seventh grade, we were just discussing this right here. B-26 Marauders going over Romania for the oil fields. May 7th. This is the headline from right here in New Orleans.
that's along the Rhine. I don't know the name of the city. It's Berlin or Dresden, I'm guessing. What's it say? It's Cologne. I'm sorry, this is Cologne. That's right. Cologne is a port town that sits in the river. That's right. You guys read this. And this is um, Lieutenant Winters, who retired a major from the famous Band of Brothers 101 Airborne 506. When they found one of the uh, Nazi concentration camps. And some of those pictures are actually right here, too. Are they criminals? When we're done in that gallery, we're going to go across this uh, spirit bridge. And when I get up here, I'm going to show you guys where you're looking out over New Orleans. It's uh, overcast today, but really not raining. And you get a look at Magazine Street out there. In the distance is the big Algiers Bridge flags. Let me come over here and show you guys the backside where we came in. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at this, guys. Very, very pretty here today. Campaigns of Courage. Road today. Look what we've got in the scene. We've got a mock up. Call it, Kirk. Yes, sir. The ME 109. 10 ME 109s out of the sun. Yes, sir. What a great Iron Maiden song. Ace is high. All right, we're going to the European and Pacific theaters. This is the Tokyo and Pacific area. Really, really cool if you haven't been in here. They do this like the inside of an actual battleship. And here's your leaders, China, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Hirohito. And Doolittle's Raid is actually playing right here on the video screens. And of course, there's really no video of that, but they do have all that stuff. The famous Doolittle Raid. And then Midway. Holly Weird actually did a very good job of this movie. Usually they screw it up horribly, but that was a very good movie if you saw it. Big open area here. Look at this. There's Coral Sea. Look at this huge video screen. All this is authentic, folks. Guadalcanal, the beginnings of the Pacific War. Weapons. You guys, isn't this amazing? Look how they've built this up. Isn't this great? On the other side, the U.S. must launch its first land offensive. And our weapons. Why don't we throw in a bayonet or two? My goodness. One of our great Marines, Fleet Marine Force, Holland M. Holland Mad Smith. 40 years of service. Oh, man. And look who's right next to him. Come on in here, Kirk. Let's see him. There's our man right there. King of the Black Sheep, BMF 214. Where did they base out of? A slot. They were in a slot on a little island called Bella La Bella. That's right. But are rebuffed by British Commonwealth troops. In China, they commence a massive eight month assault plan. Over here, something very, very 
Special Private First Class Jackson, Peleliu, the Medal of Honor. How about that? On display right here. Thank you, Marine. Semper Fi. the Pacific, the great miniseries, Eugene Sledge, Sledgehammer, Halalu, Omura, Tokyo, Osaka, who's from Osaka? Mr. Fuji, then here's Hiroshima, taken from the actual Enola Gay, airspeed computer, and the log book from the Enola Gay right here. There's some of your aftermath of Nagasaki also. Okay, we are now down here in the European theater. Axis powers, allies powers. The road to Berlin and the big interactive map over here. This thing, guys, is like 12 feet wide and seven feet high. Really, really cool. Wow, one of my favorite parts of this museum. Look at this, firepower. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't it beautiful? I wish I had one or two of every one of these. You know, just for display purposes. Really, really nice. Look at this. Tunisia. Kazarine Pass right back here in Italy. They've built this up like an Italian town. Look at this. It's great. And didn't we all love pinups? I still do. Look at that. Wow. At a crossroads at St. Mary Louise, a savage battle breaks out. It's a tiny town, but a strategic point for blocking German reinforcements. At 4.30 a.m., the 505th Regiment raises the U.S. flag out of the end. This is the D-Day section, Northwestern Europe. Once again, good old American Beautifully done in here. Look at this. It's almost like live action. All these artifacts. The legend, the Battle of the Bulge, December 1944. Wow. Surrender? Nuts. Nuts. There you hear the famous words of General McAuliffe. And here is Bastone. Five 
days like the German Farewell Alpha Yoke meets with military civilization and states in the United States and signs a document of unconditional surrender to all the Allied powers. The war in Europe is over. Allied soldiers, relieved, celebrate the end of the killing. The Nazis' dream of a thousand year ride is finished. Dresden. The streets of Berlin lie vacant, obliterated, littered with bodies. Cities throughout Germany lie in ruin. Read this, people. Read it. Okay, we've come outside now. This is called Canopy of Peace, and we're in this big open area in between. Look at this. This is finally finished. We were here two years ago and none of this was done. This is gorgeous. In between the actual main buildings over here and the aviation center. It's called the Boeing Center right there. Let's go see some airplanes. Look at this, guys. Look at this. We're inside the Boeing Pavilion. Look at these vintage warplanes. These are absolutely real. They're not mock-ups three levels we've been here before two years ago and it wasn't finished but look at this let's look around the sherman is here and they actually moved this this morning so that's why it smells really good and look look what's aimed right at me right now so there you go probably knew i was going to stand here and they have the rhino attachment on the front so it could dig out mines there is a actual legitimate sherman tank B-24 Bombardier cross-section over here. Boy, I like the paint job on that. And twin 50s up there. Let's, let's get back to the paint job there. There we go. There's where everybody said. Look at that beautiful B-25. We're on the third level here of the Boeing Pavilion. Good view from way down there. All right, Kirk's gonna tell you a little about the 25 and the Doolittle Raid. On April 18th, the Doolittle Raid launched into Japan. It was a suicide mission, but all but six, I believe, returned back to the United States. And this was a later model, right? Yes, this is a later model, B-25, hence these guns here. The, the ones Doolittle flew didn't have those guns there. They had okay. them up front. This was actually a B-25 gun ship. Yeah. Noticed all the guns in the front of it. Yep. Impressive. It's not a mock-up like I was saying earlier. This is an actual living plane. All engines removed to balance the weight. One of my all-time favorite planes, the P-51 Mustang. This one uh, painted with the famous red tail logo of the Tuskegee Airmen. Got two kills right there, as you can see. Well, that's a beauty. If you haven't been to the Tuskegee Airmen Museum, in Alabama, you must see it. It is really amazing. I've been there, had a great time. The beautiful B-17 flown right from the ceiling here. Look at that sucker, you guys. The Mighty Eighth Museum, where's it located? Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Don't miss it if you're ever in Savannah. It's a beautiful museum and they have replicated one of these planes painstakingly. And was it the 5,000th one off the line, right? I believe that. And they named it something like that. And volunteers took thousands of hours to get it back. I was mentioning early the P-51, Roscoe Conkling Brown Jr. That's actually a picture of his actual plane. Here's a little bit of his biography. You guys hit the pause button and show that guy some big time respect. Isn't that awesome? And once again, the paintings and markings of the famous red tails, the Tuskegee Airmen. Thank you, sir. We're now in the gift store and bookstore. Very, very big. Like I always say, when I do a Facebook photo album, merchandise, spend all your money. And finally, we're back outside. One of the more famous things here is they do have fragments of the Atlantic Wall. You guys can zoom, hit your pause button and read up on some of the things they have here. Unbelievable poured concrete thousands pot look at the pot marks on these things you guys all kinds of shells and everything here these are lit up at night also if you did not know that and there's three of them 
of these segments of the wall. Wow. The memorial honoring the 88,000 airmen killed during the war. It's a bronze with an entire flight crew. When we were here two years ago, they were finishing this, and now it's done. Very nice. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. The National World War II Museum in New Orleans. Real Americans, great Americans, the greatest generation. Come to New Orleans and see this place. See you right here next time on the Adventure Channel.